What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're finally gonna take out the Razer SX500 and see what kind of power this thing puts down on the street. But before we do that, I'm gonna be showing you how to install a far driver controller on your electric bike. In my case, it's gonna be on a Razer SX500 with an Electro Co EC4P motor and an Emorge 72 volt 40 amp hour battery. The process is pretty much gonna be the same for other electric bikes equipped with a brushless motor but I'm gonna be just doing the basic install to get the motor running correctly. I'm not gonna go into the details with accessories such as the DKD display for today. So let's get started with the wiring. As of right now, I just have the controller physically mounted on the frame. I don't have any of the wiring hooked up yet because I wanted to go over that with full detail with you guys, starting with everything that we're gonna be using today. Just some wire connectors, heat shrink to clean things up, and some terminal style connectors. This is a QS8 pigtail harness that we're gonna hook up for the power source and ground on the controller. And then this is the harness that comes with the far driver controller. It comes with a bunch of connectors that we're not gonna be using for today, so I don't wanna make it too confusing. I just wanna explain the most important ones. This is for the hall sensor for the motor. This one perfectly matches the connector that's on the EC4P motor, so we don't have to do anything with this. This is a Bluetooth dongle, so we can connect to a tablet, or in this case, I'm gonna to connect to my phone, so we can make adjustments through the app. And this, the orange wire is for the ignition. We're gonna have the signal wire hooked up to the key switch, so when we key on, it sends signal to the controller to turn the bike on. And then this three wire, black, red, and green three pin connector is for the throttle. We are gonna be using a Suron standard replacement throttle, but we are gonna modify the connectors to match with the far driver. This is just a pigtail connector that I took off of one of my like old eBay throttles. We're just gonna cut the original Suron connector off and put this one in place. Then there's also this blue plug with the black and yellow wires going to it. This is actually for a three-speed controller, but the harness came with this looped connector that if you connect it, it pretty much bypasses the need for a three-speed controller. It just automatically puts it on the highest speed setting. I have no interest in multiple speeds on this bike. I pretty much just want maximum power at all times. So we're just gonna leave the loop connector plugged in. But this is pretty much all you need to hook up just to get the bike running. And here's the keyed ignition that I'm gonna be using. It's got a built-in voltmeter, same ones that I use on all my other Razor projects. So this comes with a three pin connector. We're gonna end up cutting this off and putting some ring terminals on there. Red is gonna be for power supply, black is for ground. Then green is gonna be the signal wire. So when you key on, this green wire is gonna send signal to this orange wire to turn the controller on. And then as far as tools needed, very basic hand tools here. You just got a pair of wire clippers, wire strippers, crimpers, a lighter for the heat shrink, Phillips head screwdriver for the battery terminals and for the face wires. And then just a couple small zip ties to clean things up once we're done. If you are interested in checking out any of the items that we're using for today's project, I'll have everything linked in the description below. All right, let's start with rewiring the Suron throttle. So on the throttle side, black is ground, brown is the power wire, and blue is the signal wire. And then on the far driver side, black is obviously ground, red is power, and green is the signal wire. So we're just gonna make sure black goes to black, blue goes to green, and then brown goes to red. And here's how that ended up looking like. I cut off about 10 inches of the harness since I think it's just simply too much wiring that we're gonna end up bundling up since this is such a small bike. So we're gonna do this one next. 
We're gonna cut off about two feet and then hook up terminal connectors for the red and black wire. And then we're gonna extend the green wire to meet up with the orange wire on the far driver side. And this is what that ended up looking like. I replaced the connector on the far driver side. So it's just a single pin that matches the blade connector that's coming from the signal wire on the ignition and then hooked up terminal connectors for the power and ground. And these are just a pair of replacement Suron grips. You'll notice one is a 22 millimeter and one is a 24. The 24 obviously goes on the throttle and the 22 goes on this side of the bar. I'm actually going to pull out the battery temporarily so we can make more room to run all the wiring. So far driver wiring seems to be pretty similar across their whole lineup. There'd be five posts on the very top of the controller. The blue, green, and yellow posts are for the phase wires for the brushless motor. And then the red and the black are the positive and negative terminal for the battery. So we're just gonna hook up the QS8 pigtail to that. And then this is gonna mate with the connector on the battery. But we're definitely gonna connect this very last after we finish everything else. So a quick recap of how everything is hooked up. So here's the harness coming from the far driver. I only have the signal wire hooked up to the ignition switch signal wire, and then the hall sensor connected to the connector on the motor. Three phase wires on the top, and then the power cable going to the negative and power. And then those two terminals are also supplying power to the key switch. Nothing else is being used at this time. Though I'm gonna keep all these connectors set aside since we may add accessories to this bike setup in the future. Now let's go put the battery back in and clean up the wiring. I didn't like how I was able to immediately see the voltage as soon as I plugged in the battery and the controller doesn't seem to be turning on. So I'm gonna see if the wiring in this specific ignition switch that I received from Amazon is switched. Sometimes they are. So I'm gonna switch the red and green wire and see if it makes a difference. 
For diagnostic purposes, I swapped out the terminals for the green and the red wire on the ignition. All right, so it seems like I'm having some sort of issue with this far driver. I tested the wiring, the terminals, it shows 79 volts on the controller when I check with the voltmeter. And then when I key on, the signal wire going to the orange wire on the far driver, it's getting proper voltage. Uh, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. All right, so we finally resolved the wiring issue. It actually had nothing to do with what I did. Uh, it turns out there's just a loose connection on the signal wire in the connector head for the harness that came with the far driver. That would be the top right orange wire. I just shoved it into the connector more and then the controller just started working. So if you're having a similar issue, make sure you look over your harness connector. Okay, now we're gonna go into programming the far driver controller. I went ahead and took off the front sprocket from the motor again. Since it's best practice to let the far driver do the learning process with the motor not connected to the rear wheel, since especially since this is gonna be a welded sprocket, it's just gonna be spinning forward and backward over and over again. So funny thing is I did the auto learn procedure and I cannot get this Surround throttle to work. Then I remembered I was having an issue with this aftermarket replacement throttle when I had it on my Suron, so I ended up switching out to an OEM one and my Suron worked immediately. So for testing purposes, I'm gonna swap out to a foot pedal that came with one of my Kunray controllers just to see if it'll work. All right, so that just confirms that we didn't do anything wrong with the wiring and there is in fact something faulty with the aftermarket Suron throttle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my old Tolario XXX throttle and then I'm just gonna rewire this to work with the far driver. Though the start button's not gonna function because we don't have any use for that. That is the green and yellow wire. I'm just gonna be using the ground power and signal wires just for the throttle function. Just like that, we have a working throttle. Now we're actually gonna do some tuning with the controller. Start by keying the bike on and opening your Far Driver app. On the bottom right hand side, connect to your Bluetooth dongle on the Far Driver controller. Bottom left side, click Paris and open up the advanced settings. This is the window where you can change all the parameters for your tune if you want something specific. But since I'm not too familiar with this controller, I reached out to my buddy Giovanni for some advice, which I simply just copied over to the advanced settings. But if you don't feel comfortable with doing a custom tune, you could simply just stick to the auto learn feature in the graphs page. Since this is the first time we're taking this bike out, I don't wanna to get too aggressive with the tune since I'm still trying to figure out my sprocket combos and whatnot, and we've never ridden this bike before. Although this battery is able to support max continuous discharge of 240 amps, that's a ton of power. I'm gonna set the controller to 200 line amps and maximum phase amps of 400. I really don't see why anybody would ever need more power than that in a Razor. So I'm just gonna stick with those settings for the meantime. Let's reinstall the sprocket on the EC4P, put the chain back on and wrap this bike up so we can finally take it out. Now let's make sure this works.
can't believe it's finally time to take this thing out for its first test drive. I swear to God, I cannot get a break with this bike today. So I just took it out for a quick test drive. I wanted to do a test power pass before I start filming and of course, as soon as I got out of the neighborhood and laid the power down, the wheel stripped. So you see the free wheel is just spinning in place. That's because the threads on the RSF wheel gave out during that first pull. And now we likely need a new rear wheel. So this is gonna put the project on a quick pause while we wait on a replacement rear wheel for the meantime. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any suggestions on how I could quickly fix this RSF wheel or if you've ran into this issue before. But if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with the Razer SX500 project, my Talaria, or my new 72 volt Roar Mantis X, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.